Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You, or You've Been Libeled, as it would be called if it were on LWT. In the news this week, drama outside the High Court as a Fleet Street photographer gets his tie caught in the window of a witness's taxi. <laughs> Following England's qualification for the European Championships, retiring Captain Brian Robson's spare kit is packed away. <laughs> And after the success of wheel clamping in the inner cities, the Department of Transport announces new measures to curb illegal parking. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team, a man who used to go under the name of Bing Hitler. That's until he came up with the absurd stage name of Craig Ferguson. Comedian Craig Ferguson. And with Paul Merton this week, someone who passed up an invitation to be on this programme last year in order to go to Iraq for an interview with Saddam Hussein, as a result of which TV chiefs tell us there are plans in the pipeline for a new chat show hosted by Saddam Hussein. <laughs> <laughs> So, being sticklers for old values, we're going to start with round one, Ian and Craig. Uh, who's upset about what here? Uh, this is Melvin Bragg celebrating the fact that Salman Rushdie took a thousand days to write his new book, Isn't uh, Mohammed Lovely? Uh, <laughs> now, that's a, a protest. There was meant to be a protest this week protesting that um, Salman Rushdie had been um, sentenced to death by a foreign power, reasonable sort of thing, and the Foreign Office said, could you not rock the boat, because we've got a lot of delicate negotiations about arms sales. I mean, about, um, <laughs> about hostage, hostage deals. It is, it is. Good old I F.O. The thing on Salman Rushdie was revoked, because he's staying in my back bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul and Trevor, uh, who's this, uh, who's come into a nice little nest egg? Oh, so Alan, Alan Green? <laughs> yes, he's, uh, he's been given a, a golden handshake, which is... Uh, Money to burn. <laughs> yes. £20,000 to burn. What sort of handshake is that? I'm not up with the terminology <laughs> of uh, <laughs> King's Cross. I've really no idea what that is. It's sort of, it's a king to hand relief, but there's £20,000 attached. Oh, good. <laughs> Absolutely right. It's former DPP Sir Alan Green, who's apparently been rewarded for his services to the retail trade in the King's Cross area. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been given uh, £20,000 uh, of taxpayers' money. That'll keep him off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. Uh, the prostitute Nicola Evans said, me and my friends could do with the cash. They'll get it, don't worry. <laughs> Christmas will come early. <laughs> In addition, it turns... Unlike Sir Alan. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I didn't say that. <laughs> Can't believe he said that. Thank God he didn't. Uh, Ian and Craig. Now, who's in it up to their necks here? Mm. Um, oh, is, uh, oh, that's a curd. Oh, yes, so it is. And, <laughs> and that's... So is that. <laughs> <laughs> that's something that rhymes with curd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't see any bird there. <laughs> there was a, a concert, a curd aid, curd, curd aid, and it raised a huge amount of money, and the curds, for some unknown reason, seem to want it. Um, and have been saying all week, please, Mr. Archer, can we have our money, please? Ooh. And we know he's a charitable fellow. I mean, if you're a prostitute hanging around a railway station, he'll, he'll come along with a brown envelope full of money. <laughs> um, Allegedly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you're I absolutely think the right. curd started wearing sort of like small tight dresses and lots of makeup. <laughs> 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 and uh, finally in this round, Paul and Trevor, two points if you can identify this uh, Russian Republic, but only if you can pronounce it without stumbling. Could it be Chichen Ingushetia? They've got very Could bad haircuts there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pronunciation was uh, impeccable. Yes. But, what was it again? But the answer is wrong. <laughs> the production of Guys and Dolls, by the way. <laughs> An outdoor one. Yes, it's the people of tiny Chichen Ingushetia, or Ingushia, uh, depending on whether you come from Russia or 
Chechen in Gushia, uh, <laughs> who this week declared their independence from Moscow and appointed their own president. Uh, the new regime is a rather curious mixture, being largely Islamic, but backed by the Mafia, a situation hotly denied by their leader, Ayatollah Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> if, they, uh, if they bump you off, they'll drop you into a river wearing concrete open-toed sandals. <laughs> which a sobering thought brings us neatly to the end of round one, at which point it's clear that, uh, well, it's about as level as a score can be. Ian and Craig have four, and Paul and Trevor have four. Well, time now, by way of an aside, for our caption competition. Paul and Trevor, I'd like you to look at this. <laughs> and Ian and Craig, cast your eyes over this. And if by the end of the program you can come up with the witty, scabrous and irreverent caption, we'll all be amazed. <laughs> so uh, while you're thinking about that, we're going to ask you to stop thinking about that and concentrate instead on four rather fatuous headlines, one each for you to identify. Paul. All work, no tea. Yes, um, this is the, um, the, so the, somebody's come to agreement with somebody, the builders or something, building industry, they can work more, but have no tea breaks or something. Is yes. it a char lady's charter? <laughs> <laughs> John Not Major's new <laughs> ideas, presumably. It's, uh, it's the campaign for British construction companies, in fact, uh, uh, to put an, uh, an end to the traditional workers' tea break and ensure their employees spend a full 40 hours a week hard at it whistling at women and reading the Daily Star. <laughs> uh, it's also claimed that uh, projects like Channel Tunnel Rail Link would have been delayed for months by British Rail employees uh, brewing up. A BR spokesman blamed the wrong kind of tea leaves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trevor, qu'est-ce que c'est que ça? Or what is it that it is that this is? Is this the story about um, this, this French guy who lives, who lives in this country um, under the, the single sort of European monetary union or whatever it is, and, um, and he got rather exasperated with the traffic jams and, and got out of his car and, and beat somebody up, and who happened to be his boss and who had employed him about two hours earlier or something. Yes. <laughs> Which is a very, very bad policy. I mean. not, a, not a good idea, really, no. No, not if you want to keep your job. It's a uh, French confectionery executive, his name uh, Alain Basseur, who was uh, cut up by a motorist near York, whereupon he roared after the offender, kicked his car door in, grabbed him by the lapels and threatened to kill him. He then <laughs> continued on his way to take up his new job, only to find that his new boss was the motorist in question. <laughs> uh, showing a traditional British sense of fair play, his employer has allowed him to continue working for Roundtrees, but has given him a slightly new job. He will now be painting all the smarties by hand. <laughs> Craig, uh, keep dying, you're on video. Uh, a memo to the presentation staff of Sky TV, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know, the, the, uh, the woman in New York whose husband was having a, a heart attack and she videoed it uh, <laughs> while he was getting his death throes on the floor because she wanted to put on that Beatles About type show. <laughs> oh. Which, I always thought Beatles About was a kind of, it was an unfinished title, it should have been Beatles About, a bout of clap. If you ask me. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> allegedly. It's, um, <laughs> it's New York housewife uh, Rose Langdon, who imme whose immediate reaction uh, when her husband Robert had a heart attack was to dive for the video camera and record it. <laughs> Eventually an ambulance was called, but only by their son when he arrived home from school. Well, that's after he'd fixed the lighting gantry and checked the sound levels. <laughs> and uh, finally in this round, Ian. Death threats for head who banned pigs in classroom. Um... This was the headmaster of, a, of an all-Muslim school, um, or a 97% Muslim school, who um, decided that there couldn't be any more pictures of pigs on the wall. Yes. And he presumably received some death threats from... Um, Salman Rushdie. From <laughs> Salman Rushdie. I thought this was about teacher shortages and they've drafted him farmyard animals to... Because <laughs> I, I, I remember my school, we had a, we had a pig taught as technical drawing. <laughs> They're not very good with the chalk on the blackboard. <laughs> this was, Can't uh, get the shapes. <laughs> it's headmaster Don Abbey at uh, Montgomery School in Birmingham who has banned all references to the word pig in case Muslim uh, pupils are offended. And the word pig is to be replaced by the word panda, <laughs> as in Salman Rushdie is a stinking panda. 